This is America on the Road, winner of the International Automotive Media Conference Gold Medal Award for Radio, and now in its 24th year on the air. Thanks for being with us as we bring you the latest automotive information from around the world, and we have that, the latest, not just information, but the latest information from around the world. America on the Road is brought to you by DrivingToday.com and the Coalition for Vehicle Choice. I'm Jack Nerad. With me is Chris Teague. Chris, how you doing? I'm doing quite well today, Jack. How are you? I'm swell. Uh, you know, I'm here on the West Coast in uh, California. You are in Maine, I believe. Uh, how are things in Maine today? We are deep into beach weather, which is where I will be tomorrow. Enjoying it quite a bit. Well, you're, it's painful uh, because they have <laughs> closed the beaches in Los Angeles County. And, uh, you know, I happen to live in a beach city where the beaches are closed. So uh, I guess pandemics are not good things, are they? <laughs> Not at all, but I will count this as maybe one benefit of living in a state with only a million and a half people. Yeah, yeah. out across a huge area. So I've got more than that, you know, on my doorstep practically here. So <laughs> there you go. Well, uh, thanks for being with us. Of course, you write for drivingtoday.com, as I do, and a bunch of other websites. We both write for Forbes.com as well, and uh, various this, that, and the other things. Uh, in the road test segment today, we're going to be looking at the Volvo V60. Uh, cross country, I was driving that, uh, and uh, Chris, you were in the Lexus GX 460. Is that not correct? That is correct. Yeah, big well. beautiful dinosaur of an SUV. <laughs> okay, yeah, we'll talk about that. I, I had some experience in the GX more recently as well. Uh, our special guest today is a guy named Brian Bell. He is the marketing manager for the Ford F 150. And uh, a brand new 2021 Ford F 150 was introduced. Uh, just moments ago, well, not moments ago, but uh, not too long ago, uh, and we talked to him about it at length, so we will have a very in-depth interview with Brian Bell of Ford on the F-150. Uh, some fascinating stuff to talk about there with, with that vehicle. Before we do anything else, though, let's uh, take a look at the week's top stories. What kind of news do you have for us, Chris? Well, you just mentioned the F-150. It's uh, the elephant in the room for many reasons. I think it'll be uh, it'll be an interesting truck to see, but it'll be exciting as well. The, the technology and the, the reveal uh, really got me going, and then the hybrid powertrain is worth worth talking about too. But I think uh, the big story there is the interior. They the Ford has really stepped up the game with the F-150. Uh, I think that if the final production model looks as good as the renders and the photos we saw in the reveal, uh, Ram will have quite a battle on their hands for interior quality and technology. Right, right. I think the technology story is, is pretty interesting, too, all the way around. Uh, hybrid powertrain, a, a lot of other things, uh, including the, uh, the ability to um, use the, the powertrain as a generator and, you know, to power a lot of different stuff. So uh, interesting stuff out of the Ford F-150, and we'll be talking with Brian Bell about that uh, at some length later in the show. Another thing that's going on news-wise is that uh, sales are coming in for June and sales aren't quite as dismal. In fact, they're not as dismal as a lot of people predicted. Uh, they are certainly down versus June of last year, uh, but they're probably going to come in maybe 10, 15 percent down, not the 40, 50 percent uh, below last year that uh, some people were fearing. Uh, you know, even as in some areas uh, people are getting more concerned about COVID 19 again. Uh, and there's some business closures. At least they haven't extended to uh, car dealerships in, in most areas that I'm aware of. So uh, car sales are actually uh, moving right along. Yeah, it's interesting to see the effects that uh, the pandemic has, not just on uh, car sales, but on the activities that car dealers uh, do. You know, I have a friend who works for a uh, dealership marketing firm. They handle uh, social media and print you know, advertising, that sort of thing. And they're saying that they're seeing a slight bump. People are starting, or dealerships are starting to feel a little bit more confident as things go on, and they're spending a little bit more money. Obviously, it's not uh, the heyday that it once was, um, but that's going to be the case probably for a while going forward. So uh, hopefully things start to, to, to look back up, but as you said, they're not as bad as people thought they would be initially. Yeah, yeah, and it just uh, what it, one of the things it shows you is that car buyers aren't like typical people out there. I mean, they're, they're actually more affluent than the, the typical person on the street uh, very often. And uh, another way to that's being indicated is the car transaction, the individual transaction price of uh, a new car continues to go up. 
uh, despite the fact that, uh, I guess, officially we're in recession. Uh, so that's interesting as well. And this has been a, a, a pretty darn good time for used car dealers. Uh, a lot of people don't want to get into public transportation these days, so that's uh, giving a boost to the used car game. Absolutely. They're actually starting to see some uh, bumps in their the used car prices. So, uh, you know, more people are buying, but uh, the demand is, or I'm sorry, the supply uh, hasn't caught up even with the kind of dump into the market from Hertz and, and other rental, rental car companies. So uh, that'll be an interesting uh, thing to see as time goes on. Right. We're also, as you alluded to with the Ford F-150, we're seeing some vehicles being introduced now. And uh, it's kind of the new normal is a, a, a webinar, you know, something online where a bunch of journalists are, are tuning in uh, to maybe a live press conference or maybe something that's canned. Uh, and then we get the, uh, the details on the vehicle. And the most recent one I saw was for the uh, Kia. This is going to be a new name for you guys. Uh, Kia K5 which is the new name for the Kia Optima. Uh, they have decided to go a different direction, and uh, you know that's going to be a pretty exciting car. There's some uh, interesting things about it that are different than uh, the sister ship, which is the Hyundai Sonata. I agree. It'll be, uh, so looking at it, it's a two-and-a-half-liter turbo four-cylinder engine, and Kia and Hyundai both have an excellent dual-clutch uh, gearbox, so the K5 is going to get 290 horsepower with that that incredible dual clutch, so it should be a blast. Yeah, I, it's kind of indicating to me that Kia is taking a um, sporty direction. We talked a, a bit about the Kia Stinger uh, a couple shows back, I think, and, and went, well, this kind of doesn't really fit in with the rest of the Kia line, which is just fine, but n not necessarily sporty or uh, performance-oriented, but uh, it looks like with the K5 and with the configuration you talked about, um, they're going that direction, and that, that's probably an interesting way for them to go and differentiate themselves from, from Hyundai. I uh, totally agree, and I'm all on board with it. I think Kia makes us a great car. Uh, the Stinger was a blast, and this car, if it has any of the balance and the refinement, it'll be just as fun and a smaller package. Right, yeah. Well, we look forward to driving that. In fact, I would say there's probably a dozen cars <laughs> that we look forward to driving uh, that we've heard about. Uh, seen, uh, reported on. Uh, we've done everything but drive them. So uh, that's that's the next step. Well, when we come back, we'll be uh, road testing a couple of vehicles, the Volvo V60 Cross Country and the Lexus GX460. So stay with us for that. Uh, with Chris Teague, this is Jack Nerad. You're listening to America on the Road, and we appreciate the fact you're with us. Welcome back, everybody, to America on the Road. This is Jackie Red back with you with Chris Teague. And uh, it is road test time on America on the Road. We each week road test a particular vehicle. Um, one of the few things we as automotive journalists can still do is drive cars and then tell you about them. So uh, we have done that. And uh, this week, uh, I think we've, we've gone a little upscale here. We've got the Volvo V60 cross country. And Chris, you were driving the Lexus GX460. Tell us all about that. Well, as I mentioned or alluded to before, it's a, a big, beautiful, although beautiful might be in the eyes of the holder, uh, dinosaur. So it's, it's, you know, it's been around for a while. It hasn't changed a whole lot over the years. But 2020 has uh, brought a brand new grill to the front of the, the vehicle. So now it's a giant, giant grill, big enough to almost climb into there's some new standard uh, driver assistance aids and a new off-road package so the version i tested was the luxury uh, gx 460 it starts around sixty five thousand um, dollars had a beautiful red leather seats uh, very comfortable up front the second row uh, captain's chairs were very good i drove the same vehicle the 2019 gx 460 last year on a road trip in tennessee at that time my six-year-old daughter uh, said the back seat was uncomfortable. It was too close to the floor and didn't have enough leg room. Uh, not surprisingly, this year she's a couple of inches taller and the seat's even more uncomfortable for her. Uh, so I think the third row, even though it's there, should be reserved for uh, very tiny people or very short trips. Uh, otherwise, I think that you know Lexus has done a good job of keeping it relevant. It's a body-on-frame SUV, so it's uh, you know kind of rough and tumble, a little bit of truckiness underneath, but 
if you want to go off road and you want a nice SUV on top of that, I think the GX is a great choice. Uh, what do you think? Well, I'll tell you, we had a, a GX uh, maybe four weeks or so ago, and I, it's one of those vehicles where I think it's really showing its age, right? I mean, maybe it's just me, or maybe it, you know, it was <laughs> the time I drove it, uh, but it seemed, um, as you say, very truck-like, um, not particularly refined, and just all around, I, I went, wow, this is striking me as, I, and I have liked the GX before, but I just think uh, maybe time has passed it by. And uh, <laughs> there are other better choices uh, in that segment these days that give you uh, better ride quality, for example, uh, better ergonomics inside, easier to use uh, array of controls uh, than the GX. It just struck me as a nice try, but uh, maybe there's others <laughs> that are better. I agree. My daughter, uh, both of them in the back, uh, it's too bumpy to read, too bumpy to sing songs, that sort of thing. Um, I think that, you know, Lexus fanboys, if you want to call them that, or Lexus fans will be satisfied, but there are better choices. And, and from a technology standpoint, I think they, they haven't done enough to keep it up to date. The infotainment system uh, is based on or very similar to Toyota's Intune. Uh, at least Toyota started in, including Apple CarPlay in most of their vehicles. It helps kind of get around some of that awkwardness. But uh, the GX is not one of those vehicles on Lexus's list. And it could be infuriating to use. Uh, some of the menus are very hard to, to get around. And, and it's just very distracting to do anything when you're in motion. So I think that I agree with you. On that front, you know, I use the word dinosaur, and I think that that's a fitting word for for what it is. Well, there you go. So, didn't love it. <laughs> I guess well, that's I didn't love it, but I didn't dislike it either. I think right. that there there are things I could find to like about it, but you know, it's uh, maybe six and a half, seven out of ten attempt. Yeah, there you go. Well, I I wouldn't disagree. Uh, I was driving the Volvo V60 cross country, and it's one of those pretty idiosyncratic vehicles. For, or for one thing, it's kind of a station wagon. I know we shouldn't you know, utter the words station wagon anymore. It just brings up uh, horrible thoughts in a lot of people's minds. Although I will say, and you are probably afflicted with this too, Chris, car journalists for some reason have a soft spot for station wagons. Are you one of those people? Oh my goodness, you have pegged me as one of them and I am absolutely firmly in that club. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what there is about it. Uh, maybe we like the combination of utility and the fact that it's kind of like a sedan, so it handles more like a car than a, a crossover does. And that's where the cross country is too. It's, it's taller than the V60 wagon. Um, so it has a little bit more of the SUV vibe to it, but it is largely a station wagon, competes with the Audi All Road, for example. And that's maybe the other, only other example you can come up with. Uh, you know, there might be a Volkswagen product that is vaguely competitive as well. Um, <laughs> it has standard all-wheel drive. It has just the Volvo T5 engine is what you can get in the V60 Cross Country. That uh, provides 250 horsepower uh, out of two liters. Uh, it's like every two liter from every European manufacturer <laughs> provides about 250 horsepower. So... It's getting to be standardized. It's plain wrap kind of thing. You can't get the other powertrains uh, that you can in the other V60s, and maybe that's okay, but uh, it wouldn't be bad to have a little more power. I think what I like about uh, the V60 Cross Country in particular is its refinement and maybe the fact that it's not just another SUV, that it, it does have uh, some sedan attributes to it. I think the driving experience is pretty good. Um, it's... It's in no way a sports vehicle, but uh, I think if you were to take this on twisty mountain roads, you uh, wouldn't hate yourself at the end of a couple hours or even at the end of 20 minutes, uh, as you would in some other cars. Overall, the fuel economy is pretty good, so not so bad. It is a little less than the V60. It's rated at 22 miles per gallon city, 31 on the highway, and 25 miles per gallon combined, which is neither great nor, nor terrible, I would suppose. And it is a, a very useful vehicle. You know, I think both of us uh, like station wagons for their utility and uh, 
certainly get that in the uh, in the V60 cross country. I agree, and uh, if uh, hopefully no one from Volvo is listening, but the week that I had the V60 cross country, I used it to haul some uh, patio tiles for um, the project that we were we we're getting started right when things started shutting down. Uh, it handled thousand pounds of tiles without a problem, uh, but in normal use. Uh, the the seats the front seats are extremely comfortable. Volvo does a great job with ergonomics. The kids had plenty of room in the back, and that's the wagon utility, right? So you fold down the seats, you can throw almost anything back there. Uh, fold the seats up, and the, there's plenty of legroom in the back. So uh, Volvo did a great job. I mean, they've been making wagons for as long as anybody. So I think that the they they've got it down to a science. Yeah, absolutely. I, with the seats folded, there's 50 almost 51 cubic feet of uh, cargo space. That's a lot. That's a lot. And even behind the rear seats, there's 23.2 cubic feet of uh, cargo space. So, you know, this is a very accommodating vehicle. Uh, and I like it a lot. It's one of those vehicles, we, we've talked a lot on the show, how everybody in the world doesn't have to have a crossover sport utility. Uh, and this is bordering on that, <laughs> bordering on being a crossover sport utility, but it's really not exactly, and uh, for that we applaud it. So I, I think uh, both the, you, Chris, and I like the Volvo uh, V60 cross-country quite a bit. Yeah, like I said, uh, cannot can't argue with the ability to carry large items and then plenty of people right on the, in the, on the other hand. So uh, I would definitely uh, give it my, my mark of praise, if you want to call it that. Ah, the, the Chris Teague mark of praise. I like Put that. my stamp on it. How about that? There you go. Yeah, get that stamp out. Well, when we come back, we're going to be taking uh, listener questions, and uh, we look forward to that. Hopefully we can help you out by answering your question on an upcoming show. So stay with us, everybody. This is Jack Red along with Chris Teague, and you're listening to America on the Road. Welcome back to America on the Road. This is Jackie Red back with you, and thanks so much for being with us along with Chris Teague. And it is question and answer time. Um, we solicit, solicit your automotive questions and uh, send them to us, and we will provide answers in this portion of the program uh, because it's a logical place to do it. If we're going to have a question and answer uh, segment, well, this is it. Uh, so we want to take your automotive questions, and it's easy to reach us with your question. Just uh, email them to editor at drivingtoday.com, editor at drivingtoday.com, and uh, we'll get your question and hopefully answer it on an upcoming show. And Chris, what is your question for us? I had a question from uh, a listener about hand sanitizer and how dangerous it is to store the alcohol-based products in your car. And... Uh, over the course of the last week, I've become kind of a, an impromptu expert on the subject. I had to write an article on it a, earlier this week, and I talked to uh, a director of, of safety from the National Fire Prevention Association and had, I guess, what could be called a very interesting discussion about uh, temperatures and flashpoints. So the, the long story short is it's not dangerous, to st not really dangerous to store hand sanitizer in your car. The temperature that is required to, to flash uh, hand sanitizer, something like 700 degrees Fahrenheit, which uh, at that point, you're looking at a car that is melting itself instead of the hand sanitizer. Yeah, if your interior is 700 degrees, you're you're in a world of hurt. I mean, yeah, <laughs> something is going problems. way wrong, and you don't have to worry about the hand sanitizer, I would think, right? Yeah, there are other problems at that temperature, but uh, the big problem with storing hand sanitizer in your car is that the, the temperature evaporates the alcohol and makes it less effective. So, if you start with a 70% hand sanitizer, 70% alcohol, over time, uh, it will evaporate and become, you know, 60 and so on and, and less effective. So the recommendation is if you have to store it in your car, which we all are at this point in time, take a small bottle and refill it at home so you're not carrying the large bottle around and, and having it dilute itself. But you're not going to burn your car down by carrying hand sanitizer. Right. Well, you're probably not, even if you light a cigarette in your car, which we don't recommend doing necessarily, but Correct. some people do that. Um, uh, what else is in hand sanitizer besides alcohol? There must be some kind of buffering agent or something. Do you know what that might be? Uh, I will admit my ignorance on this subject, but there are ingredients like some of them that I read about have uh, hydrogen peroxide in them, 
and some other ingredients that can become less effective in sunlight. So huh. two things that are abundant in a hot car in summer, temperature and sunlight, uh, both work to dilute and, and kill, kind of kill the effectiveness. So if you have to bring it, bring a small bottle, store it in your glove box, keep it out of the light. Got it. Well, here's a question that came in, and I think it's very apropos given the fact that we have entered July now. And a lot of people, uh, for various reasons, are thinking if they're going to travel this summer and do any kind of summer vacation, it would be by car or by vehicle. And so the question is this. If you had any vehicle out there to choose for your summer vacation with your family, which would it be, Chris? What, what would you conjure up as your perfect vacation vehicle? Wow, out of the entire world of cars and trucks and SUVs, hmm, I think I would probably have to settle on the Kia Telluride for a road trip with my family of four, and that does not include bringing our pets, although there would be room for them if we, we had that vehicle. I think the seats are very comfortable. It's got a lot of entertainment technology, uh, USB ports in the back to keep the iPads charged up, plenty of cargo room, roof rails if you need it for... Uh, a box on top, and it can tow a trailer. So if we wanted to pull a boat or anything like that, you've got that capability too. So, uh, and I think it looks pretty slick. So it, it's got kind of an all-around uh, package, and it looks great. And so I think this is probably the second or third time on the show that I've recommended the Telluride, and I'm going to keep going for it every time. It was North American Utility of the Year for 2020, and I'm on the North American Car of the Year and Utility of the Year jury so i endorse your choice although my choice might not is not the same i would probably pick either the chevrolet tahoe the knee red car of choice or uh and as my long-suffering wife knows having had one for the better part of 20 years now and uh or the uh, chevrolet suburban uh, same logical reasons that you have given for the telluride but my family's a little bigger um, and now the girls are essentially adults, so you want even more room. You know, they're not uh, four feet tall. They're six feet tall or something <laughs> like that. So uh, I think those are great family vehicles. If, on the other hand, it's just uh, my wife and myself, well, that's a whole different story. And, uh, you know, maybe a Fiat 124 Spider or, <laughs> uh, you know, a Corvette, the new mid-engine Corvette. Yeah, that would be on my list. I think the C8 would be my next choice if it was just the two of us. Yeah, so those things and more are available. And the beauty of it is uh, we're looking at something between 350 and 400 models available on the U.S. market. So uh, there's something for pretty much everybody out there. <laughs> Well, when we come back, we will be speaking with Brian Bell. He is the marketing manager on the all-new Ford F-150 for 2021. We'll have a lengthy interview with him, so stay with us for that. And uh, thanks for being with us on America on the Road. I'm Jack Nerad. With me is Chris Teague, and we appreciate the fact you're listening. Welcome back, everybody, to America on the Road. Jack Nerad back with you. And I have the honor, and it is a distinct honor, uh, to have the guest that we're having next. His name is Brian Bell. Uh, he is the Ford F-150 marketing manager. And uh, as he and I were just chatting before we went on the air, uh, it isn't every day that you get to announce a new Ford F-150. Uh, and that's what we're going to be talking about. So we're going to be talking about the 2021 Ford F-150, which is uh, significantly renewed. That is for certain. And uh, Brian, thanks so much for being with us. Oh, thank you very much, Jack. I'm excited and uh, happy to be here to talk about the new truck. Yeah, let's set the stage a little bit, if you don't mind. I mean, F-150 is a real franchise player for Ford Motor Company. Kind of describe for our listeners how important this vehicle is to uh, the future of the whole company. Well, you know, uh, the, the F-Series trucks have been the sales leader in the industry for 43 years. It's uh, been the number one selling vehicle in the United States for 38 years, right? It's a, it's a, a big volume uh, very exciting product for the company to launch, and and uh, you know uh, uh, as the F-150 marketing manager, I'm I uh, I'm very excited to, to be a part of this launch and and get a chance to talk about it, and bring this vehicle to market. But it is important for the company, as, as all of our vehicle launches are, uh, and uh, and we're excited to get it out there. Well, let's walk our listeners through uh, what's new with the truck. Uh, 
because there's a lot, uh, a lot to talk about, and we want to cover it in, in some kind of detail. Why don't you take us uh, to the first place you'd like to take us? Uh, what is the first thing that you think uh, listeners should know about the new truck? Well, you know, I, I think it's important to know this is an all-new uh, F-150, so it's, uh, you know, it's got an all-new frame and uh, that's high-strength uh, steel, and then it's uh, a new body panels, a uh, new new uh, body. Uh, that's uh, the high-strength military-grade aluminum alloy body. So we, we stuck with our with our metal strategy we launched in 2015. That's been really, really good for our customers, right? That weight savings we found uh, turned into more capability uh, and better fuel economy. So, uh, you know, we're continuing with that approach, which we're really excited about. And then it's an all-new truck with uh, with a lot of great features, uh, 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 all-new design in the exterior, all-new interior that's just fantastic with a lot of great things. Um, and I think one of the ones that, that most people are going to be most excited about is our new uh, our new engine. So uh, as, uh, along with this new launch in 21 model year, we're launching our first hybrid in the truck called Power Boost. Um, and really excited to bring this to market. We think this is a real and solution powertrain for our customers because, um, you know, we expect this Power Boost to uh, – to have the the best horsepower and torque uh, in the segment, it's going to be our most powerful engine. It's going to tow over twelve thousand pounds. It's going to get great fuel economy at the same time, and uh, it's got a new feature we're calling Pro Power on board, which actually lets the vehicle uh, become like a generator for you. So um, our Power Boost will come standard with a two point four kilowatt uh, generator version, and then you can option up to a seven point two kilowatt version. And, to kind of put that into perspective, 7.2 kilowatts will run, uh, I think it's 28 refrigerators uh, at the same time, right? So it's really, really powerful, uh, really capable. So you, you put all that together, really excited to bring this uh, this new engine power boost to market on our all-new truck. Right. I mean, if power goes out at my home, I want to have that F, uh, 2021 F-150 in the driveway to power my entire house, it sounds like, right? Well, it's it's uh, there's some rules on powering houses, but it, it certainly has a lot of power to plug in your specific things, uh, you know, and, and take care of whatever your needs might be uh, on the individual items. Yeah, let's talk about. I know Ford Motor Company has a particular um, strategy when it comes to hybrid powertrains and, and vehicles powered by hybrids, and that they have the same capabilities, at least the same capabilities as a uh, normal ICE. Uh, powered vehicle would have without the hybrid. T- talk a bit about that, and you know what went into the th- the thinking behind the the new full hybrid that's in the F one fifty. You know, we did a lot of research on the hybrid and what customers would want, and what they would expect out of the engine, and and just like when we brought EcoBoost to market in twenty eleven. Um, the customers really told us, look, the most important part is what the engine will do for me. I buy a truck because I need a truck. Uh, and my truck has to do those truck things, whether it's for work or for recreation. It's doing things like, you know, towing. Uh, you know, I'll give you an example, over 75% of our customers tow a trailer. So, um, you know, those types of things are really important. And so when we looked at the engine, we said it needs to be a, a great truck powertrain. So it starts with our 3.5 liter EcoBoost and then adds that hybrid capability to it as well. Um, and so we, we really kind of focused on what I like I said before the end solution we wanted to make sure it had all that great capability which you know when you've got a powertrain that'll do over 12,000 pounds of towing that that's a that's a strong power, uh, motor for a half ton truck um, and then like I said we're going to end up with the, with the great fuel economy as well on top of it so yeah and giant range I think that's important too I think I, I think I I noted something like 700 miles of range on a tank full I mean uh, that's got to help just in and of itself I mean uh, people yeah. will love that yeah, great point. Yes, it will. Uh, it'll have a available range over 700 miles. Well, you talked a bit about how this is certainly a work truck. I mean, a lot of people are buying these for dual use, for personal use, and for work. But you know, talk about some of the uh, work truck uh, capabilities of the new F-150. Well, you know, it's um, uh, we, we've added some new uh, uh, some new class exclusive driver assist features that are going to help with all customers. We've added some some uh, an interesting, I guess, work feature that you might talk about is. Uh, we went out and researched customers and really paid attention to what they did with their vehicles. Um, you know, we, we actually uh, went out and uh, didn't quite live with them, but we went and spent uh, days with them doing their work and their recreational activities uh, to kind of see how they used vehicles. In one example, I actually went with a, a retired firefighter in, in Texas, spent two days with him. One day we actually went boating uh, out on the lake he goes to so I could see how he launches his boat, what he does with it. So it was, it was really fascinating. So we, we spent a lot of time learning about our customers. Well, and I think it's very strategic that you have the guy go on the boat. I mean, that sounds like nice recreation as you're working so, and on the clock. So smart idea. You know, it, 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 
it was it was just a short trip, but it wasn't a bad hour. I will tell you, it was a nice day in Texas at that time. Uh, but uh, so you know, one of the things we witnessed with customers is about half of them actually use like a laptop or a tablet or something in their truck, and they have to come up with these makeshift kind of ways to use that. So uh, our engineering team went went out and and developed our interior work surface, which is actually like a uh, we have two versions. We have the version with our, our bench seat that will fold down in the middle and slide forward and gives a nice big um, uh, working tray, basically, for you to put your laptop, tablet, or eat on. Uh, and in our vehicles with the bucket seats uh, and our flow-through shifter, our, our floor shifter, the shifter will actually fold down into the console flat, and uh, our um, uh, our console will open up and become a, a tray table there for you. So, so our interior work surface is a great example of listening to the customers, watching how they use their truck, and trying to find a better solution for them to make it more functional. So, uh, you know, that's that's just a uh, a really good example of the work we've gone into and the details we paid attention to in, the, in this truck. Right. Well, it seems like in pickup trucks, there's a, a bit of tailgate wars going on, right? I mean, uh, some competitors have some uh, pretty trick tailgates these days, and uh, you've got some answers to that, too. Why don't you talk about that a little bit? Yep. So, you know, um, we started with the tailgate stuff back in, uh, I think it was 2008 now, um, and that's been a great feature for us, our customers, to get in and out of the bed of the truck. Uh, they've told us for years they love it. And uh, so we've taken that uh, and kind of expanded on it. We now have a new tailgate work surface available on our vehicle that's a, a, a nice flat work surface. It's got a spot to actually hold like a tablet or a phone so you can look at the instructions or something you're working on. It's got uh, clamp pockets so you can actually uh, – put uh, clamps uh, in the tailgate to hold down like a piece of wood uh, that you want to cut, measure, something like that. It's got, you know, built-in tape measures. It actually even has a, um, uh, one of the things I like the most is it's got these uh, uh, little tie-downs uh, on the side of it, uh, one on each side. So you can actually use a tie-down, your, anything that you're pulling, like if you're hauling uh, long lumber uh, in your truck where your tailgate's down, you can actually tie it down on the tailgate to help stabilize that load as well. So, you know, again, more really thoughtful features. Um, and then you think about that tailgate work surface tied to our new ProPower on board system, which I mentioned with the hybrid. We also have available on gas engines, our 2.7, uh, 5-liter, and 3.5 EcoBoost. Um, so you can actually plug in your tools right there at the back of the truck, do whatever work you need to, to clamp down that lumber, cut it, drill it, saw it. Um, you know, again, paying attention to the customer, really kind of thinking of those ways that, to help them make the truck a better tool for whatever job they're doing. Yeah, absolutely makes sense. Uh, we did talk about the hybrid engine, which I guess is going to be your top engine in this vehicle. But of course, F-150, many, many variations, that's for certain. Talk a bit about uh, various powertrains available. Yeah, so uh, we have six powertrains on the F-150. Uh, we have our 3.3 liter, our base V6. Uh, that gets an improvement for um, uh, for 21 mile a year because we're going to uh, add our 10 speed transmission to it. Uh, so that, that efficiency is going to come for that powertrain with that. We have our 2.7 liter EcoBoost, which is one of our top sellers. Uh, we have our 5 liter V8 for those customers that really want that V8 power. We've got a great 5 liter uh, for them with all the V8 sounds and, and the capability of it. That 5 liter is actually going to get uh, displacement uh, uh, on demand, uh, so variable cylinder deactivation, I should say, um, to improve with the fuel economy. Uh, then we have our 3.5 EcoBoost, again, the one we launched in 2011. It's been a great powertrain for us, tons of capability. Um, that actually improves a little bit. We're, gonna, we're doing some things to it that will give it some uh, additional horsepower torque and capability for 21. And then we have our diesel. So we have our 3-liter our Power Stroke diesel that we launched in 2018, continuing in 21 model year. So, uh, you know, you take those five engines and the hybrid, we've got a great six powertrain lineup for our customers that really kind of fits uh, any anything our customers need, right? We like to think of our vehicle as uh, the power of choice so that, um, you know, it doesn't matter what, what you're looking for in a truck, we make sure we have it for you from the powertrain and from our series lineup, right, starting at work truck all the way up to our limited. We have six series for you. Um, but, you know, we really work at that for our customers to make sure they have what they want. Yeah, I think that's uh, certainly one of the strengths of the F-150 is the number of variations. And, of course, one of the reasons you're able to do that is you're the leading vehicle in the segment. You've got a lot of volume and you have a lot of variations. I, You know, in reading through the press material, I, I was fascinated to see that you have 11 separate grill options, for example. I, you know, talk a bit about the, the exterior and uh, various options available for the consumer. Sure. So, so like I said, we have six, uh, six series in the lineup, uh, our XL, XLT, Lariat, King Ranch Platinum Limited uh, that we're launching. And then uh, within those series, we actually have appearance packages because we find customers really, you know, they, they like that, uh, that different look. So, um, you know, XLT is our biggest volume 
uh, so I'll, I'll use that one for an example. A customer can come in the showroom. They can choose the base XLT look. They can choose the chrome look, which is a, a, a chrome grill, chrome wheels, chrome running boards, uh, uh, a few more chrome pieces like uh, tow hooks and um, exhaust tips, right? We pay attention to the details of it. Uh, that's been a really popular package for us for years. But uh, in the industry now, there's a lot of movement towards darker, more uh, aggressive finishes. We call that our sport package. So that customer will get a, a dark grill, dark wheels, black running boards, uh, you know, those, those touches that kind of give that more aggressive dark look. So a customer can come in and choose from any of those appearances on our XLT or frankly on our Lariat um, that they like. And then uh, we also have a, you know, different versions like on our Kink Ranch of a, of a base and a chrome package. And we have our STX uh, that, that brings in some of those aggressive looks on the, uh, at the lower end of our lineup for customers as well. So we do a lot of things, not just with our series, but then those appearance packages within them to really give those customers choices. Right. We're speaking with Brian Bell. He is Ford F-150 Marketing Manager. So happy to have him on the show. Let's talk about uh, infotainment. Uh, again, an, an, I think another battleground in the pickup truck realm uh, has been uh, infotainment systems, screen size, screen orientation. Uh, tell us a bit about that with the new 2021 Ford F-150. Yeah, so, uh, you know, we, we've, um, we, we've talked to customers and, and looked at what they do with their trucks, and, and we're really excited uh, for 21 model year that, that sync will be standard on all of our vehicles. Uh, the sync system has been great, right, uh, from an infotainment perspective for customers. Um, and so with that, we're going to make our 8-inch touchscreen standard for all our vehicles. So right from our entry-level work truck, that customer is going to get that nice big touchscreen, uh, you know, that's going to show the backup camera great. It's going to have that functionality of the touchscreen in it. Um, but uh, key with that also is our truck customers, they, they, you know, they like to make sure they have – some controls that they can use with with uh, gloves and uh, so we put some hard buttons and knobs in uh, to tie with it for some basic radio and climate control functions then starting in our xlt lineup we actually have our new screen our new 12 inch uh, uh, our new 12 inch touchscreen which is really uh, fantastic right because it allows that split split screen look so you can do multiple things with it at once um and uh, when when you know that, and you're laying it out in landscape orientation, yeah. which is different than some of the other trucks. Talk a bit about that too. Yeah. yeah. So again, it goes back to the customer paying attention to them. What do they do? What do they like? How do they use their truck? Uh, and that that thing I just pointed out earlier, where they really want to make sure that there's some controls that the stuff they use regularly they can use with their gloves on. So we put it in landscape uh, orientation for them, so that left us enough real estate underneath for logical radio climate control. Uh, knobs and buttons uh, right where customers expect them and are used to them. Um, so we, we really think that's going to be a great setup and research. The customers really just loved it. You know, the, the big screen, very functional, very vis- easy to use, very visible, and then the really simple controls underneath. Brian, as marketing manager, uh, you know, you've lived with the truck for a while now and, uh, you know, helped with the development, I'm sure, and participated in, and looked at everything that the, the truck can do. What are some of the areas that are most exciting to you personally or you, th- you really think are home runs uh, in this new 2021 F-150? I think uh, some of the things that are really exciting that, that we haven't covered so far, like our our connectivity and our, our uh, driver assist features that we're bringing into the truck. So, you know, the F-150 is going to be fully over-the-air update capable uh, for the full truck. So uh, all, the, all the working systems in the truck uh, will be able to actually, you know, provide customers with over the updates and then we develop an over the update system that that really will minimize any downtime for customers a lot of cases they won't even know what's happening and they can control then to just hit the button to load it um, so that over the update that connectivity is really really a, a big benefit for our customers um, you know it's going to let us update their vehicles for them make them better um, uh, throughout the life cycle and then you know some of the other things are our are, uh, are driver assist features we've got some great new features coming like uh, our intelligent adaptive cruise control that includes lane centering and, re- and um, street sign recognition to, to help you control your speeds and uh, reverse brake assist and uh, post collision braking and evasive steering assist and and then one of the, the the really exciting ones coming for the truck is active drive assist we, we will have a a system that on certain uh, certain sections of highway you'll actually be able to take your hands off the wheel uh, and that the truck will uh, steer for you down the highway. Um, now there, there, you know we'll have a camera system in the vehicle to make sure you're paying attention to the road in case anything comes up that you need to react to. Uh, but you know it's a really exciting feature for customers. Well, we're launching that uh, so at, at launch of the vehicle the customers can get a uh, 
a driver assist prep package. They can choose to order that. And then uh, and that's on our Lariat King Ranch Platinum and Limited series. And then when the feature software becomes available next year, then they can uh, choose to purchase that software download if they like uh, through the over the year update. So, you know, it's, it's like the first sign of how that over the year update system can benefit customers and, and, uh, and a new technology that we think truck customers are going to really love to help take some fatigue out of those long drives. Right. Well, it all sounds very exciting. I can't wait to get behind the wheel of not just one, but several F-150s and, you know, try them out, do some trailer towing and all, all the stuff that you do with a, a, a wonderful big truck like the Ford F-150. Uh, uh, tell our listeners when uh, the vehicles will be in showrooms. Well, we expect them in the showrooms the, later this year in the, in the uh, late fall, early winter time frame. Terrific. Terrific. Anything else you'd like to add before we let you go? No, just uh, you know, I'm uh, excited to uh, to get this truck out there for customers to see and and uh, and hear their reactions to it. And uh, you know, I appreciate you having me on the show today to be able to talk about it. Well, it's such a pleasure. I appreciate it. Brian Bell, Ford F-150 Marketing Manager, has been with us. Thanks so much, Brian, for being with us. Oh, thank you. Really appreciate it. We'll be right back after this on America on the Road. And that was our interview with Brian Bell of Ford, talking about the all-new 2021 F-150 pickup truck. A very, very important vehicle for Ford Motor Company. We appreciate Brian being with us. And another guy we appreciate being with us is Chris Teague. Thanks so much for being with us and co-hosting again this week, Chris. Jack, as always, thank you for suffering through my hot takes and unpopular opinions. Uh, but before we go, I'll remind everybody, if you like what you listen to today, wherever you get your podcast, leave us a review and rate us. It will help us bump up the uh, the charts and become even more popular. More popular than we are seems hard to imagine, but uh, I guess it could be done. And uh, we certainly hope for that. Uh, and thanks again so much, Chris, for being with us. Thank you, all your listeners, for being with us. We do appreciate that. And we hope you join us again next time right here on America on the Road. We're sponsored, of course, by drivingtoday.com. So check that out and uh, join us again when we come back in our next episode. This is Jack Neerad.